Experience local excellence with RoofRight Roofing in Charlestown, Rhode Island. With over 40 years of unmatched expertise, RoofRight specializes in architectural shingles and holds the prestigious title of GAF Master Elite Installers. Known for their commitment to the community and support for local initiatives, RoofRight is your trusted partner for all of your home's roofing needs. Call today for a free estimate at 401-212-4140. Hi, this is Dan from Lathrop Insurance. In this challenging insurance environment, Lathrop Insurance can be your beacon in the storm to help you find the coverage you need at the right price. Now, more than ever, you need a partner in the insurance industry that can work with multiple carriers to make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. Lathrop Insurance carries home, auto, and business insurance and can be reached at 401-596-2525. We've been supporting the local community since 1939, and we look forward to working with you. Mallory Field on what feels like a Saturday afternoon, but it is only a Friday afternoon, and what a matchup we have ahead. We have our Bulldog baseball squad welcoming the Barrington Eagles to town, and this is a rivalry that dates way back, and I do believe Barrington may have knocked the Bulldogs out last year. That being said, Michael Poole toes the rubber tonight for the Bulldogs, and when he is uh, on the mound, uh, you always got a real good shot, I'll tell you that. I am the voice and Greg Morano. We have Lisa behind the lens, producer owner Ben Barber, producer Dave DeAngelis. We are 3-2-1 Westerly and uh, we got a heck of a ball game ahead of you. And now I can't promise you folks that it's going to top the softball game we had the other day and we'll get to that afterwards. But that one, uh, I almost lost my voice way too early in the spring season. That being said, the Bulldogs undefeated in the division come in at 5-0 and in the league. Barrington comes in with one league loss and that looks like to me it was to Mount Hope, or no, they lost to East Providence 2 to nothing. One thing I have noticed about this Barrington Eagle team, they have played one more league game and have only given up 19 runs. Uh, the Bulldogs have given up 28 runs, so scoring is uh, definitely a commodity, a commodity against this Eagles team. Very fundamental squad, always are, um, as are the Bulldogs, so I expect a, uh, a great matchup. Now, what looks like a beautiful day. The fact of the matter is uh, the flag's not blowing, but somehow it is really windy down there. Uh, I mean, it's coming from all directions. Uh, it seems to have slowed down right here as we get ready for the first pitch. Everyone recalls Poole's last performance. 18 strikeouts out of the 21 outs needed to win a ball game versus Charaho Bulldogs 1-3-1. Let's see how he can work off of that as he gets set for pitch number one. And that is fouled off to the right, a little late on the fastball. You'll hear that a lot. Pool, obviously, uh, a hot topic here in Wesley Baseball, number 33. And uh, has been since he was a freshman. Everybody remembers uh, you put your face on the map in the manner that he did. The 0-1 pitch from Poole, and that is going to be low. And stop. we got Grayson Simmons behind the plate per usual. You're going to be saying that for uh, three years. Two more after this one, which is a uh, – that's another uh, huge uh, hot commodity the Bulldogs have. To be able to have a dependable catcher that gives you three solid years of uh, starting uh, quality baseball back here, especially here at Similori. The 1-1 fouled away, and that's he inside. And uh, he's got some pepper behind his fastball here early. I am psyched to be here. It is getting into the nitty gritty of the season, folks, for all the sports. Almost towards that mid part, not quite yet. That ball is low, two and two the count. And now because of the uh, amazing finish of the softball team the other day, that uh, that's made our total, I believe, uh, in division records for all of our outdoor teams that we cover, they're sitting at like 20 and 0 or 19 and 0, something like that. And the 2 2. Breaking ball, and it's hit to Parker at short. Scoops it up, fires the first. Low, but oh, he doesn't hold on. And uh, that is going to be. We'll see how he rules it. Maybe he didn't feel single. It was close anyway. But a leadoff man manages his way to get on base here for the Eagles. Um, I'm the ball on deck here for the at-bat, excuse me, is going to be Murphy for 
the Eagles. Correction, that's going to be, yeah, Murphy. Bulldogs have a doubleheader here today. We're only here for the first half. The second half is a non-Liga versus Waterford, uh, where you're either going to see a jubilant Bulldog team or a uh, frustrated one. First lefty of the day, and stays away, ball one. Bulldogs will probably... Uh, Try a few new things here later on this afternoon, but this is the biggest game of this early season. These two teams are up top with East Providence, uh, who they don't get to quite yet. And he's stealing upstairs, and the throw is behind. He's going to get the second. Nice job of blocking it by Parker. So right off to the bat here, uh, Barrington with a runner in scoring position. We have a 2-0 count, and nobody out. At back, Quinn Murphy, he is a senior, and they have, let's see here, one, two, ten seniors now, that's a bowl load. So it's an experienced uh, Barrington squad. And that's right down the chute, he's going to put it in the gap, going to track it to do what it does. Nice job on the run, and good piece of, uh, you got a good piece of it, well tracked out there by Jack Tanuna, and they much need it out. So one down. Number 19 steps in for the Eagles. That is going to be Luke Tanu, another senior. Runner takes his lead off of second base. And the kick pitch, breaking ball stays low. So, yeah, we have our lacrosse team. They're sitting at like 6-0. and all. Girls lacrosse is either 6-0 and all or 5-0. and all. Softball team moved to the same general area, but and always the, is the uh, more important part. And this baseball team trying to protect it here tonight. 5-0 and all coming in. One down, the pitch right over the plate. Strike. Changes the speed just a little bit. Throws them off. One, one ball, one strike, one out. Runner in scoring position. Top half of inning number one. Front half of a Bulldog doubleheader. And that one's there. Grounded a second. It's going to move the runner over. Scooped up. And out number two is on the books. So he goes down four to three for out number two on the field of choice. Well, not a field of choice, but it did advance the runner to third. With two down and in steps number two, Miles Fontaine, a junior. I do believe I have their averages in here, amongst many other things. Pool, a kick, pitch, and ground ball to short. It's going to get cut off by third. Big play here. He does cuts it off. Fires, and he is out. Big play for the Bulldogs. Saves the run, and that's just a beauty there at third base for Westerly to shut him down. That's uh, Josh Ferrando. Cuts off the grounder at short. Fires the first, and uh, that's a way to get you fired up after the top half. No score. We will return. Hi, this is Dan. Ever thought about leveling up your fitness game in a fun and meaningful way? Kiefer's Martial Arts on Granite Street has everything you're looking for. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and of course, adult karate. It's not just about getting fit, it's about building your self-confidence, discipline, and that unstoppable feeling you get from all your hard work. Stop in to Kiefer's Martial Arts today to sign up. Are you looking for a fresh cut in Westerly? Step into Rio's Barber Shop in Granite Plaza. Whether it's a classic trim or a trendy new look, we've got you covered. Experience the perfect cut for every age and style in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. At Rio's, it's not just a haircut, it's an experience. Visit Rio's Barber Shop in the Granite Plaza in Westerly or give us a call to schedule your appointment at 401-315-2208. Your style, our craft, Rio's Barber Shop. Uh, 
All right, welcome back, folks. Bottom half of the first inning, and already sort of fireworks. That was a big defensive play uh, by the Bulldog third baseman, Josh Ferrando. I mean, this field looks in beautiful shape, folks. And considering the amount of rain and puddles that were on it, uh, they've done a fantastic job. And it literally just got cut moments before the players arrived. And that little extra speed almost cost the Bulldogs because Ferrando had to cut that off to have a chance of throwing, the, throwing that batter out at first base. Uh, otherwise, that run crosses the plate. Uh, he was able to make the play and save the run. We are scoreless as Simmons gets set to lead off for the 5-0 Bulldogs. Pitching number 14 for the Eagles. Coming off of short rest, Jack Lawson, a junior. I do believe he's their ace. But again, uh, I don't think anybody has the one-two punch that the Bulldogs have in Tenuta and uh, Poole. Pool, Tanuta, however you want to call it. I give the senior uh, captain uh, just the leadership that he provides everywhere, as well as the bat, and made a nice play in the field uh, first out of the game. So in step Simmons. Defense playing straight up. Again, the wind looks idle. First pitch right over the heart, and pops a fastball past him. Trees aren't moving, so maybe the wind did calm down finally a little bit. Oh, and one. And that stays up. One and one to count. And the one one breaks away. Simmons, nice job not chasing it. Two to one the count. Two and one the count. Two on pitch, stays inside, called strike on the inner portion. Two and two, the count. Pitcher gets his sign, the 2-2 two -two offering. And breaking ball, and he goes with it, and that's going to be a single nice piece of hitting by Simmons. Goes with the break of the pitch on the outside portion. Beautiful job of how to hit a breaking ball, especially with two strikes. Simmons does his job as leadoff and reaches first. And at bat number 12, Drew Bozak, center fielder for the Bulldogs. On deck, Tenuta. And that's up and in, so we're going to miss. Those are tough to lay off. They look just so fantastic. And 0-1 uh, pitch. And checks him out first. He didn't get No. Yes, it does. First baseman had him fooled. I had to reach my head out. And now we have the leadoff man in scoring position. I thought it got by, but nice shot by the first baseman. And a freebie for the Bulldogs. Great job by the dugout of uh, alerting him and the coach as well over there. Chris Pizzotto. Tight quarter. There's a tight window up here in this booth, even for one guy. Owen won the count. Yeah, that's going to hit him. And he's going to get a freebie in the first. Bulldogs in business. Lead off man. Second base. Bozek reaches first. And Tanuta steps in. That was a breaking ball. I caught him in the back. Clearly a mistake. And this has always been one of those respectful, respectful rivalries, I'd have to say. Uh, always seem to be in baseball as well. So the Bulldog dugout loud here early on. The kick pitch, and he turns on it. Little tail on that fastball. Number 14 again, Jack Lawson. Let me highlight. Bulldogs with a busy week of baseball, or will have been once it comes to completion here at the end of today. 
Hey, yeah, breaking ball. That one comes over the plate, and he fouls it straight back. Count is 0 and 2. And if you're a smart pitcher, you don't come near it for a couple pitches. And he breaks the ball over the plate, surprises him on the inside portion, gets the punch out. And uh, that was a nice pitch. Catches him on the handles in the first out for the Bulldogs, still with two runners on. And in steps number 34, Tom Fiore. And if anyone has had a high hand this year, and I'm not talking just Wesley, I'm talking the entire division, it is Tom Fiore. And, and, I, and I see it every time I watch either their lineup or I read about him at home and the fact that he is only a sophomore. And uh, he's a heck of a pitcher, too, as a sophomore. But right now, uh, his bat is just lightning. And it has been all year long as on base percentages in the 700s could be higher that was through five games breaking ball and a beautiful job by the catcher of uh, preventing two runners of being in scoring position behind the batter blind catch and one and oh the count but yes fury has uh, definitely done it feeling it here in the box would love to continue things here and he drives it center fielder left fielder's tracking and that's not going to be able to move it. It'll fly out. Seven unassisted. Two outs on the books for the Bulldogs. In steps number nine, Nick Tria. And what was super uh, hopeful here comes down to see if uh, Tria can extend the inning. Possibly extension RBI here with two down. Not holding them at first. And break a ball right down the pipe for one, 0 and 1. And the one that stays away, a little bit of an extra on that one. One in, one the count, two down here, two runners on. Bottom one, no score. Bulldogs, Barrington, Rhode Island Division Two Baseball here on this Friday spring break afternoon. Front end of a doubleheader, which is the only end we're actually going to bring you. Second end, back end is a non-leaguer versus Waterford. Breaking ball doesn't come back quite enough. Good eye. Uh, Tria is a, he's a good batter as well as swinging the bat. He uh, makes it difficult on pitchers. Uh, he makes uh, the pitchers come to him, which is a great attribute to have as a hitter. Uh, that being said, the Bulldogs will be playing Waterford. And you got to remember, it does count for those Connecticut teams, so uh, they don't pull any punches if it's their aces right over the plate, and that is fouled away to the right. If it's uh, Waterford's aces turning the rotation, that's who the Bulldogs will see. Rather, the Bulldogs will probably be in more of a, a little bit of work on uh, things, experimental mode type deal. I'm always going for the win, clearly, but uh, I wouldn't imagine you're going to see Tanuta on the hill. Two two offering, two down. Break him all the way. Great job by this catcher here. Saved a couple there. Senior Eamon Bickford, I believe, is number 12, or could be 13. So Tria, again, working the pitcher, working the count all the way back to full. Pitches fouled away. Comes at him with a fastball, a little up in the zone. Too close to not go after. Nice shot by Tria. Again, making the pitcher come to the plate. Full count. Two down. Both runners uh, should be in motion. Didn't seem like Simmons jumped there, but they should be. Should be moving. Payoff pitch here. And they're off. And it's a grounder to the second. 
Doesn't get screwed up by the runner, and the throw is no good, but he does get back to the bag. So, again, Bulldogs knock on the door, don't score. One in the books. Bulldogs zero, Barrington zero, and we shall return. Hot summers and cold winters can be unbearable, but DNV Mechanical has the solution for you. As a Mitsubishi Diamond dealer, we provide energy efficient and personalized comfort solutions for your home. Our experienced technicians will install your new system quickly and efficiently, ensuring your complete satisfaction. Don't suffer through another season of discomfort. Contact DNV Mechanical today for a personalized ductless mini split installation that fits your lifestyle. DNV Mechanical, your comfort is our top priority. Hey guys, Paul at Surf Cantina. I'm hanging out in our game room, which is available for rent. We are currently booking our graduation parties. Feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to get you started. As they were last season, both teams come in this one. Excuse me, Barrington has one loss in the division, and the Bulldogs don't. Bulldogs are five and zero. Oh. East Providence matches the Bulldogs at five and zero, oh, so the Bulldogs tied up top the division. Pool on the hill after a scoreless first, a little bit of a scare put into them, but. Uh, Good defense by Ferrando, uh, thwarted the uh, Eagles' efforts. Poole coming off an 18 strikeout performance. And oof, let me tell you folks, I don't know, uh, I think it was yesterday, the softball team uh, really showed a great example of why you absolutely never give up in high school sports. They had a huge matchup for early in the season. They, too, went into it undefeated. They also went into the bottom of the seventh inning, down 7-1, to one, I do believe, with an out and no one on. And uh, I'll tell you the remainder of that story after. In the box for the Eagles, leadoff batter, top two. Pool, kick, delivery, and that is down the shoot strike with some pop behind it. Sets up on the inner portion, it looks like. And that's that right down the pipe. No, Lowy calls it. One and one to count. One and one. Nobody on, nobody out. And the pitch check swing doesn't matter. It is a strike. Nice breaking ball by Poole. Ahead, one and two. And the abortion calls him. Strikeout number uh, one for Poole, one down in the second. In the steps, the lefty, number 24, and that is Grant Colton, the senior, 11 seniors. Poole's kick and pitch and fouled away. He's finding his spot, his groove. You can see it. As everyone knows, Poole as a freshman. And that's over the outer portion. Chops slowly to second. He's going to have to run down and flip quickly, and he does. Nice play over there by number 24 for the Bulldogs, Zach Miner. Four to three for out number two. As he uh, got the top of it and a little dinker to short to second, and it was almost slow enough to uh, allow the runner to leg it out. In steps number 20, Nick Scandera, another senior. Two down now, nobody on for the Eagles. Bulldogs would love to go one, two, three. 
And that's a check swing. No call, no check. And we're just going to give it a ball, I suppose. 1 and 0 is the count. And that one's right down the shoot, one and two. So, yeah, Poole uh, pitched the clinch. pitch and won the clinch game in the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and the state championships as a freshman. Uh, ice in his veins. Nothing seemingly shakes him. And swing and a miss. That is strike two. One and two the count. The one two pitch and it is foul back. Better stays alive here. Pool is right on the strike zone with every pitch. Touching all parts of the plate. The one two, two down. And that slows it out a little bit and doesn't get the call. A little tail off the plate apparently. Off the inside or it was low. Two and two either way. Infield back. And that is a breaking ball. Swing and a miss. And that will end the top half of inning number two with the strikeout. Two Ks in the inning for Michael Poole. And the Bulldogs will take their turn after a quick break. What's going on, Wesley? It's Patrick down here at the Wireless Zone at Dunn's Corners, Verizon Authorized Retailer. And right now is the best time to come on in and get a brand new phone. We are offering our hottest new 5G phones, the iPhone 15, the S24, Pixel 8 for free with a trade-in. And the best part is 5G is finally coming down here to Wesley and the surrounding areas. So make sure you're on the best network and get it for free when you're on the right plan. Come see us at 224 Post Road. Hey guys, Paul at Surf Cantina. I'm hanging out in our game room, which is available for rent. We are currently booking our graduation parties. Feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to get you started. And welcome back as we see Barrington warming up here. The Barrington Eagles come in 5-1 and one in the league, having scored 64 runs and only given up 19. That's pretty impressive, folks. Winning by a score of the likes of 1 to nothing, so they've had to tough out a couple. 13-1, 10-2, 12-1, 12-3, and 10-2. Uh, so the, their wins have been convincing. Uh, they've lost to East Providence. They lost 2 nothing. East Providence sits up top of the division tied with the Bulldogs. Uh, the only two remaining unbeatens. The Bulldogs sure would love to come out of this game. Uh, still, one of the remaining two only unbeatens. Uh, this is the front end of a doubleheader as they uh, will welcome Waterford, Connecticut, to town uh, for a non-league battle. A couple games got shifted around and rescheduled this week, and that's what uh, they were left with. And we will be covering the first half, the league matchup. We being 3-2-1 Westerly. And we are just about ready to get the Bulldogs that back going here as number 24. J Zach Miner steps in the box for the second baseman, who made a nice play last inning to end the inning. Uh, oh, during the inning. Pitcher gets his sign. And that's five balls to center field. Looks like he's got a beat on it. And he does. One pitch, one out. That would be an eight unassisted, nine unassisted, eight unassisted. <laughs> Don't listen to myself. Four out, number one. In steps number 15. Jaden Parker, the shortstop for the Bulldogs. On deck, the pitcher, Michael Poole. One down, nobody on. Bottom two. Wins picking back up, coming in. And it must be pretty bad because I can hear the wind. Called strike. And that's on the inner portion. Called strike. I knew he was going to call that. He's been. And as long as the ump's consistent, I really don't complain. 
Batters have to learn the uh, strike zone first time through sometimes. Oh, when two count, nobody on one out. Yeah, that's a breaking ball down the chute. Doesn't get the call, though. Low it is. The one two pitch in. That is going to go over his head and hits under his bat. It certainly did. So the count will remain one and two. That's unfortunate. They always tell you to drop your bat, but when you're in the situation, that's like kind of the last thing you're thinking about. The ball comes at you pretty quick. Anyway, one and two. And that one's going to be low, two and two to the count. Bulldogs, all tough hitters in and that. They, they work the pitcher. And if you do see one jump on it, it's, it's a mistake by the pitcher. And that one on the inner portion fouled away off his hands. Balls are coming in from Barrington, from the dugout to the catcher to the pitcher. Bulldogs pitchers, um, breaking ball, and that one comes down in the heart of it. Strikeout, out number two, and up steps Michael Poole. Uh, so their pitches are getting called in from the dugout, which differs from the Bulldogs, as Coach Pizzotto explained on the uh, Sports talk with me on Saturday morning, and uh, his pitchers call his own pitches. He, uh, they teach him, and, and they have faith in, faith in what they uh, have learned and what the capabilities are. And at least as far as Tanuta and Pulgo, I know that they uh, they call their own game essentially. Only one count. Break a ball again. This one stays inside. No, he gives it that to him as well. Oh, and two, two down, nobody on. Bottom half of the inning, number two. Down the shoot upstairs, though. I had a bad view of that inside portion. I had to change my position here. One and two count. And that one breaks away, and he tries to pull it a little slower. It's going to be a tough play to field, and no throw. And that's a line drive single in the books, folks. Michael Poole makes his way to first base. And uh, a nice piece of defensive hitting. He was way ahead of it. And uh, found his way to start possibly a two-out attack. Maybe we'll see here. As number four, Josh Ferrando steps in, who uh, the senior utility, I'll say, but third base today. And uh, he saved a run already. The Bulldogs would be trailing one nothing. And that one breaks away. Nice job by the catcher. Barrington catcher is pretty nimble. At the ready. Kick, pitch, saves upstairs. Goes to more of a slide step to try to keep the runners a little bit more at bay, as Eagle pitcher does. And that one's a ground ball in the hole and clean field. Shot first, good. Safe is the call. He pulled him off the bag, and uh, Bulldogs are in business. Two runners on. So they've had a hard time throwing across the diamond. They really have. No runs have scored because of it, but this inning's alive. Not over yet. We'll see if uh, that uh, continuation of the inning, because that's an error on the shortstop. And... Uh, See if the Bulldogs can capitalize here. But a couple times, more than one, um, they've had, they've made life difficult on the first baseman, who is tall. Has good length, number 20. They actually have a uh, height. Nick Skinder, uh, the senior. A 
coach giving some instructions to his pitcher and catcher as the Bulldogs hit the top of the lineup for the second time. Grayson Simmons will step in the box. Simmons more than capable of finding a gap or a foul line to tell to get one of these runners around. The 0-1, check swing, went, 0-1, here's the pitch. third hard fielded well taps on third inning over so we have two in the books no score we shall return after the break folks what's going on Wesley it's Patrick down here at the wireless zone at Dunn's Corners Verizon authorized retailer and right now is the best time to come on in and get a brand new phone we are offering our hottest new 5G phone, the iPhone 15, the S24 Pixel 8 for free with the trade-in. And the best part is 5G is finally coming down here to Westerly and the surrounding areas. So make sure you're on the best network and get it for free when you're on the right plan. Come see us at 224 Post Road. Welcome back to the start of inning number three. The first two innings are uh, pretty quick. Uh, good defensive uh, play by both teams. Uh, neither team has really mounted much of an attack. No one's reached third base yet. Uh, oh, actually, correction. Uh, the, there was a little threat in the first inning uh, by the Eagles. Poole is, uh, seems to be throwing his game. Seems to be very comfortable, uh, getting more comfortable as the uh, innings progress here. Again, this Barrington team up top of the division. Uh, Bulldogs tied at 5-0 and in the division with East Providence. And the Eagles come into this one at 5-1. and But again, look, they have some good numbers. And I'll revert right back to that 64-19 to uh, runs against and runs four numbers. Uh, the games they've won, they've won very... Uh, convincingly uh, that in steps Westerly and that's why Westerly is in the talk for a uh, possibility of making a run to the top because in steps Westerly with the two-headed monster of uh, Jackson and Michael Poole and I don't know there's another team who can match that clearly it takes a little bit more than that but to have that as your foundation uh, you automatically have a shot Bulldogs uh, fielding wise uh, they, they have a very good defensive team they have a fast team so this is a great early season barometer that could matter late and maybe a tiebreaker of some sort. They are not in the same pod as the uh, division is broken into four pods. I don't think they are. But here we go. Simmons throws down, and we are going to get the top of the third started. I am the voice, Greg Morano. We have Lisa behind the lens. We got Bruce Owner, Ben Barber, and he will be with us today. And Dave DeAngelis. Together we are 3 2 1 Westerly. We also have the intern Juliana, just not here today. And here we go. Top third. Pool at the ready. Right handed hitter, and that is low. He is uh, definitely uh, throwing harder and harder. Want to know the count? Kick, delivery, load away. And one certain thing you're not going to see out of Michael Poole is emotion, uh, any kind of negative emotion anyway. And that's, uh, that's a huge uh, attribute, especially... Being that he's only a sophomore, but he came out junior, but he came in as a freshman with zero fear. Ground ball off Poole's glove. Kicked its way to second to first. Out number one in the books. Four to three unassisted. 
Zach Miner reels in the grounder cleanly with the put out for the Bulldogs. So nobody on one down. Top three. Barrington in town here versus the Bulldogs. And Poole's pitch is low, 1-0. The one oh one down, nobody on. And that one is upstairs, two to the count. The two oh offering from pool. Kick, pinch, there, waved that, fouled away down the right field line and out of play. Two and one, the count. Poole verbally committed to University of Maine already. The two one. Man, that is called strike, I don't know. They call two and two, the count. And that is low and away. Runs are full. So full count here. One out. Number eight at bat for the Eagles. That's Finn Thompson, senior. Trying to start things for the road team here with one down, nobody on. And that breaking ball to the plate. And fouled away. Wave that. Didn't really come down too much. Wind is howling and ripping, and I can see clearly the trees and the flag moving. And there it goes, the play, swing and a miss. Poole brings the heat for the strikeout, out number two, nobody on. You believe that's Poole's third day? In steps number four, Gabe Tanu. Another quick one. And that is swing and a miss. I won the count. He has set himself up for that opportunity, certainly. And the 01 holds back. Ball. Low is the call by the umpire. Count is one and one. And that's there, and the count is one and two. So now pool in control here. One and two, two down. Nobody on for the Eagles in the top half of the third inning here. Pool at the ready. Kick, pitch, in the dirt. Two, two. Good waste pitch. See if we can catch him chasing. Did not. Barrington also a very disciplined club. And the 2-2. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. And strikeout number four. Poole pumps his hand. Bulldogs head of the dugout. We are through two and a half, and we are scoreless. We shall return. The Thirsty Beaver Hometown Pub and Grub in Dunn's Corners is your ultimate destination for refreshing drinks, delectable dishes, and memorable moments with family and friends. Enjoy live music, DJ trivia every Wednesday night, and we're now the official spot to come watch and root for your favorite Westerly High School sports teams. The Thirsty Beaver, located at 265 Post Road, Spindrift Village, Westerly.
We are back here at Similarity Sports Complex. We had the baseball diamond today. We were at the softball field the other day. And, folks, I'll finish that story. Bulldogs in a huge uh, divisional matchup the other day. Uh, probably the best game of the season up to this point versus an extremely good West Warwick team. Uh, went into the bottom half of the seventh inning, now 7-1, to one, and uh, showed everybody why you never give up, huh? especially in high school sports. The girls were able to rally and do most of it with uh, one out on the board, two, some of it with two. Uh, they scored seven in the bottom of the seventh and won eight to seven uh, and would have had another run coming around on the hit. It was one of the best comebacks, one of the most fun I've had, I'll tell you right now. I almost lost my voice, and it's uh, way too early to be worried about my voice. So uh, congratulations to the uh, girls' softball team who is still undefeated in the division. And the Bulldogs baseball team here looking to do the same, remain undefeated in the division. And grab a huge tiebreaker versus a Barrington team who will be hanging around somewhere in the end. And that is down the shoot, taking oh, ball. I gotta stop calling it for him. One and zero count to number twelve for the Bulldogs. That is Drew Bozek on deck to Nuda. And that stays inside, 2-0. Oh. Good eye by Bozek. Runs the helm at center field for the Bulldogs and has. He is one of four players who, was on, who were on the state title team. And that one with the tail stays in. Nice two-seam fastball by number 14, Lawson. Uh, Bozek knows what it takes and knows what it feels like to win one. And... Uh, Partnered with Tanuta Pool and um, I want to see who the other one might be. Two and two the count now. There is a fourth. Kick. Ooh, almost hit him. And it's called strike. Strikes him out looking on the inside portion. I haven't figured out that inner portion yet either. I'm going to be honest. Uh, tough call. Uh, that'll make it one down. Nobody on. And up steps Jack Tanuta. Tanuta, uh, last season, finished the season with a 338 batting average. Uh, that's a ball way outside. This season, up till now, no, this is not even, they haven't updated them yet, so that was only through three games. So when they're updated, I'll let you know. And it is fouled away, out of play, down the right field line. One in, one the count. Now, with the wind coming in the way it is, uh, you would really have to put something behind something to, get it, to pop one out of here today. You're looking more line drive. Find an alley, find a gap. Hey, that breaking ball. So that one stays inside. Called the ball. Two and one on the count. Fiori on deck. And that is going to hit him, certainly. And again, a breaking ball. So between the shoulder blades, Tanuta goes to first. Hardly felt that, I'm sure. And again, that's the second breaking ball that didn't have enough break on the ball. And the Bulldogs will get the bag. Only one down, and they're in business here. Abab Fiore. See if he can continue the high hand. Runs are going to be at a premium here in this one. Batter calls timeout. <laughs> and that one tails to the inside, and that was just enough uh, to get in on the hands of Fiore, who uh, fists it away, fouled on the third baseline. Owen won the count. Checks my first, and ball pops loose. K 
Can't do anything with that, though. And it is only one, one down. We are in the bottom half of inning number three, folks. It is a pretty nice day. It's a great day in the booth to watch a ball game. I got the best seat in the town of Wesley for this two and a half hour period or whatever it may be. Without a doubt. Two quality ball clubs. Oh, he gets the call in. That was outside, framed by the catcher, and I'm starting to form a little bit of an opinion. Oh, and two is the count. Takes off, throws away. They knew it was coming. They slide. He's in. And a good call by the umpire. He slid under it. Uh, good catch by the uh, way to foresee the play by the Eagles, who uh, threw it up and away with the catcher. And he uh, was still unable to catch Tenuta. And that's the baseball IQ. That's a good primary, a better secondary. It's all about the jump. Tenuta gets it. And Bulldogs are in business, runner in scoring position now. One and two, Fiore. Breaking ball, watches that one come back. And that one, uh, he's been calling that one. I'm going to give him that one. So that is a threat averted for the Eagles. In steps Nick Tria, two outs. And Tenuta in scoring position. close that second. They don't want him to get that secondary. Steps off the rubber. They want to uh, try to prevent him from scoring on a single. Wind gusts and changing directions. Right to left now. Pitch up and away. 2-0 the count. And to call the strike. One one offering, two down. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Big hole between the second and the first. They're giving tree, and he has, he does use that area. That would have been a perfect pitch to go that spot with. One and two, the count now. Big spot here, and uh, second baseman really creating quite a massive gap over there for him. I don't know why. And that stays upstairs. Good eye by Tree. Way to hold off. Pitch. Yeah, that's low. Catcher can't find it, and that's going to get Tenuta. Catcher still doesn't know. And that is going to get Tenuta to third. Never did find it. The pitcher had to come in and grab it. So uh, the disappearing ball trick gets Tenuta 90 feet away from the first run of the game. And uh, the count is full. We have two outs and Nick Tria at bat. Nick Tria is always a, a tough not to crack at bat if you're an opponent. He makes the pitcher work. He did it in his first bat and doing it again here. Pass ball. Anything to get to 90 feet. That's, that's, uh, that's not going to do it. That was easy. Called strike three. We have three in the books. Couple threats, but no score. No run scored. We are tied at zero. We shall return for the fourth. I'm Michael Kiefer. I'm the owner of Kiefer's Martial Arts here in Westerly. We're here to help people. So with kids, yeah, they're kicking and punching and blocking, and they're learning self-defense, and they're getting a workout. Martial arts is physical, but we're also trying to embed those character development lessons into their classes as well. 
perseverance and Donald Fear. We get many referrals for kids that maybe have ADD or ADHD or kids that are maybe having some behavior problems. It's not to say I have a magic wand. Those are definitely things that we're going to work on with them. We always have a two-week trial program. So if anybody's like, oh, that sounds pretty cool, but I just don't know if my kid is going gonna, is gonna to like it and I don't want to be locked in. Then you do the two-week trial. I'm going to give you a uniform, a private lesson, and you can come to classes for two weeks. So for people that are unsure, that's a great way to go about it. Folks, we are back, and the Bulldogs are about to throw it down to second base and wrap up their warm-ups here for inning number four. We got no score in the books. No huge, huge surprise by me. Uh, Coach Pizzotto told me that Barrington was bringing back their ace on short rest, and he is throwing like it, and the Bulldogs uh, have pool on the hill whenever either of the Bulldogs started on the hill. Uh, I mean, the, they got my favor. But the uh, Eagles coming in and doing what they do. They play fundamental baseball. They match up with the Bulldogs uh, well. It's always a battle, and uh, they come in just one game apart. And, uh, and this game could come into the picture late season. Pools bitch, and yeah, that is down the pipe and not called a strike. Low is the insinuation. The idea he's going with, I would assume. And that one down there, and he's going to slice that in for a single nice piece of hitting. Pitches away. He went away with it. And that is number three. It was the most solid hit probably of the day. Pulled those high one down the line. But uh, that was uh, Quinn Murphy. So their leadoff man on base. Leadoff man here in the fourth. 19 in the box. Luke Tanu. And again, an animated dugout goes both ways. Uh, and again, it squares the bunt, pulls back, throw, and he is not going to get there. So second, so now the Eagles have a runner in scoring position and nobody out. And the Bulldogs are in a bit of a situation. Nothing to panic over. Uh, Poole now is uh, has options. First base is open, so you can be a little bit more careful depending on uh, what part of the order they're in, which I can tell you. Let's see. It's bad. It's the third hitter, so uh, Barrington is exactly where they want to be. Um, The number three hitter at bat, number four hitter coming through next, Fontaine. So you really don't want to walk walk someone to get to the cleanup guy. The pitch. Outer portion, and he gets it. One and one to count. Yeah, so they're going through the heart of their lineup here, the Eagles. Let's see if Poole can pitch out of it. If anyone can, he can. And that bunch tipped back, straight back out of play, oh, foul. One and two the count. And I, I do believe the coach just said get it done. Let me see if he just openly said bunt. Or put it in play. And he gets the called strike three on a, a beautiful call if you're a Wesley fan. Let me tell you that. <laughs> that was a, a well chosen location by Poole and much needed out. And in steps. The cleanup hitter for the Eagles. And first base remains open. And the breaking ball stays inside, doesn't get the call. Pool of intimidated, obviously, by no one. (laughs) 
And the kick, he's going. He's going to take third. The throw over the batter, and it's on spot. Safe. Bang, bang, play. I do think he was in. Great throw, but a nice job by the hitter. I mean, I, he did not interfere by the rules of the game. He did what you should do, and he stood his ground. You own your spot in the box. You don't have to duck. You don't have to dive out of the way and let the catcher throw. Um, and I know I'm on the Wesley side of things here, but that Barrington batter is the reason there's a runner on third right now. Uh, had he not been there, Simmons' release would have been a little bit quicker. One out. And that breaking ball isn't there. So now the corners are up, at least at first. Tria. Middle's back. It's early in the game. The uh, Eagles want something to the right or a fly ball. And that is called strike. Two and two the count. He is pitching around nobody. Coming at him. Fearlessly here, the 2 2. One down. Pitch. Bring it ball. Hey, he gets him upstairs. We're going to miss exactly what the doctor ordered. And Poole gets two huge outs. Runner all the way out over the third with. Uh, for the Eagles, the coach is uh, unhappy down there on the third baseline, visibly. In steps number 11, Trevor Snow, another senior in pool, trying to get himself out of the, really the first jam of the day. And that pitch is low. One and oh, the count. Bulldogs back at it on Monday, and I do believe we'll be back at it with them right here. And that's a breaking ball in and a beauty. High-speed breaking pitch. They'll be welcoming Johnston, and uh, Johnston at the moment down a little bit further than they've been in the past couple of years in the division. Again, it's early. I mean, five, six games in, about a third done of the season. And that's a ground ball chopped. Handled at second, throws them out at first, and out of the jam are the Bulldogs, and they are fired up about it. We are through three and a half innings, and there is no score on the board. Bulldogs get set to bat. We shall return. Bring the kids. Bring Grandma and Grandpa. Heck, bring everyone and come to the Meskwamikit Spring Fest in Westerly, May 10th, 11th, and 12th at Meskwamikit State Beach. You'll find an array of great food trucks, arts and craft vendors, games, rides, and a Ferris wheel with panoramic views. Friday night is John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band kicking off a weekend of great music on the main stage. It's time for summer at Mesquamacit Beach with Springfest, Mesquamacit.org. We are in the bottom half of inning number four, halfway mark of this ball game, and uh, we have a new pitcher in the game, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, for the Eagles. Um, they said they were bringing their starter, Lawson, uh, back on short rest, and uh, he obviously hit the number, whatever the pitch count was, uh, and he is no longer pitching. Number 16 is now on the hill, and that would be Nate Coutant for the Eagles. And if I can get any numbers on him, I will for you. So the Bulldogs will have to get set to see a new arm and a no score. On a windy, blustery day here in April, it's a, uh, to me it's a beautiful Friday for a game. Bulldogs 
Zach Miner about to step in and lead off the inning. He fielded the grounder cleanly to finish the top half of the inning and end the threat. Now, the Eagles have had two legitimate threats, that being their most legitimate. That was uh, that was a scare they put into the Bulldogs. They had a chance. They missed it. And we'll see if the Bulldogs can now capitalize on that, see if that can uh, springboard them a little bit. Getting the sign, taking his time here, and out steps the batter. I was thinking the same thing. And still taking his time. The kick, the pitch, breaks away, away. The ball. One another count. And almost got the outer portion. One and one. Nice little tail on that pitch. On deck, Parker of the shortstop for the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs have had a good day defensively. And that one stays away, so it is two and one. Wind howling. You can see it on their jerseys, and that looks inside, but he's going to get the called strike. And the count goes to two and two. Bulldogs trying to get things started here in the bottom half of the fourth. Both teams have had a couple opportunities. Biggest scare Eagles, top half of the inning. That breaks away, and he waves at it, did what he wanted it to do. And we have one up, one down. In steps number 15 for the Bulldogs, Jaden Parker, shortstop junior. We're going to get things moving with an out. And that one is pulled back in, and he's going to get the call. <coughs> Up in the box, Parker. Pitch straight fastball. Gets it by Parker. Ahead in the count, 0 2. So he's got a four seamer, which we just saw there, that had no movement. And he's got one that's got a lot of tail to it. Assuming that's his two seamer. His breaking ball doesn't cut too much or has it yet. Both of those have almost gotten by the catcher. The pitch, and that is just that straight fastball, little tail. Upstairs looked great, swing and a miss. And the two down with uh, nobody down. In steps the pitcher, Michael Poole. See if he can get things started here for the Bulldogs. On deck is the third baseman, Josh Ferrando. Who again, that big play, cutting off that grounder, away that ground ball to third. And it is played cleanly, double clutch, bad throw, one hop, gets it. He's out at first, inning over. Four innings in the books, and we are scoreless here at Similori Field. Defensive battle, pitching battle is fantastic. We shall return for the remainder. Experience local excellence with Roof Right Roofing in Charlestown, Rhode Island. With over 40 years of unmatched expertise, RoofRight specializes in architectural shingles and holds the prestigious title of GAF Master Elite Installers. Known for their commitment to the community and support for local initiatives, RoofRight is your trusted partner for all of your home's roofing needs. Call today for a free estimate at 401-212-4140. And welcome back, folks. I am the voice, Greg Morano. We have Lisa down behind the lens in this blustery wind, windy day out there. 
We have Ben Barber, the producer and owner, alongside Dave DeAngelis. Together, we are 3-2-1 Wesley, and we are bringing you a uh, pitcher's duel, I would say. But uh, Barrington just switched pitchers, and uh, they had their quickest half inning they've had of the day here. So, Michael Poole on the mound for the Bulldogs doing his thing. He's got four scoreless innings uh, to his credit thus far. Bulldogs uh, getting out of a couple jams. Bulldogs, again, this is the first half of a uh, doubleheader. They have a non-league matchup versus War, uh, Waterford after this game. Uh, we will not be bringing that to you. However, what we are bringing is a league contest that the decision thereof uh, may come into play later in the season. Seedings, home, away, all sorts of stuff. Uh, Barrington, always a huge rival, and I do believe it might have knocked them out last year. So... I expected a battle. Coach Sposato expected a battle. It's just a matter of uh, which team is going to capitalize on that one opportunity that they may get. Lefty in the box to start things off in the fifth inning here for the Eagles. Pools pitch. And that is a called strike right down the chute. And the delivery pitch, breaking ball comes down, so we're gonna miss. Number 24 in the box. Oh, and to the count. And that is the outer portion of the play. So we're gonna miss. Strike three. What a pitch. Uh, one, two, three. Three pitches, one out. And uh, Pool seems to be getting stronger here. Number 20 steps in, Senior Scandera for the first baseman for the Eagles. And bring a ball to start, swinging a miss, and Bull is feeling it now. He's hitting his spots. Mount by the batter. Try to slow down the pace of things a little bit. Pool never moved an inch. He's ready now. And breaking ball right over the heart of the play called strike. And pool set. Has a sign ready to go. The 0 2 in the dirt. 1 and 2 the count. Pitch inside corner and he doesn't get it that time. And it is two, the count is two and two. And now I really do feel bad for everyone out there. The wind is howling, whipping, and it's going in the perfect direction now. I don't feel any of it. The two two. Breaking ball doesn't come down quite enough. Can't pull the string. Count is full. Good at bad by Skandura, the Eagles. And uh, called strike three on that inside corner. The Eagles batter, Skander, did not like it. I'm going to be honest, folks. I haven't loved that location all game long, but uh, I'm a fan now. I mean, if he does it both ways, I'll take it this one. So two down here in the fifth. Another strikeout by Poole, and he is fired up. He is feeling it now. And that breaking ball doesn't come back 1-0. Number 12 in the box for the Eagles, Eamon Bickford, the senior. At the ready, 1-0 pitch from Poole. And that is hit to center. And Bozak's got a beat and takes it in without a problem. And boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. Inning for Michael Poole and the Bulldogs. And Poole seems to be getting stronger. Who's going to notch one on first, folks? We are through four and a half, and we are scoreless. The Bulldogs get set to hit when we return.
Hi, this is Dan from Lathrop Insurance. In this challenging insurance environment, Lathrop Insurance can be your beacon in the storm to help you find the coverage you need at the right price. Now, more than ever, you need a partner in the insurance industry that can work with multiple carriers to make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. Lathrop Insurance carries home, auto, and business insurance and can be reached at 401-596-2525. We've been supporting the local community since 1939 and we look forward to working with you. And here we are, folks, as the innings move along. The score does not. It remains scoreless here at Similarity Field. Bulldogs set to bat. Number four to lead off for the Bulldog, Josh Ferrando. And then they flip to the top of the lineup as Simmons, the catcher, is on deck. Both teams have had a couple chances. Uh, and uh, both defenses have prevailed in those both of those opportunities. The Eagles are on their second pitcher of the day, and uh, the Bulldogs of Michael Poole seems to be getting stronger. Uh, something's going to have to give at some point. In steps Ferrando, and again, I have mentioned it before, but that first inning, when he cut off that ground ball and threw the runner off out at first, uh, without a great play like that way back when, the Bulldogs would be trailing. Looking for a sign from the coach, which is, can't work without it, apparently. And the pitch, swing. One strike on the books. Oh, and one the count. And that's chopped foul, 0-2. And, and the game, man, I just looked at the real time, and this game is in the fifth inning, and it's only an hour old. A little over an hour inside portion, and uh, almost hit him. Takes the ball, 1-2 the count. Games like these, uh, the always valuable catchers become even more valuable here at Similar Field. And that is hit to left. He is tracking. It's going to fall. And he is on base. The Bulldogs have gotten things started here. The nine hitter, Josh Ferrando, I couldn't tell, flares one out to left. And that will be a clean single for the Bulldogs as they head to the top of the lineup. And this is a position they wanted to be in. Big opportunity. They haven't had many this way. Simmons steps in. Double play depth up the middle for the Eagles. And that breaking ball comes down nicely. He pulls the string on it and count goes on one. Gets his sign. Steel gets it out of the dirt and throws too high in easily as Ferrando. And now the Bulldogs are really in business. There is nobody out. There is a runner in scoring position. Uh, batter count is one in one. And the Bulldog dugout is electric because the uh, start of the lineup is coming around here. So we have the corner first baseman way up protecting that button to get him to third. And that is... Uh, Something the Bulldogs are capable of, but they won't. And that right there, this catcher has done a real nice job, and now it becomes real important here at Similori. In close games, low-scoring games, or pass balls, uh, they've won and lost 
games here more than one occasion. There's a lot of room to cover. We've already seen the catcher just completely lose the ball. Simmons wisely calls timeout. Man, oh man, you get your money's worth with this Wesley High School spring sports schedule. Big ball, and it is hit to left, tracking it deep, but he's going to be under it. And uh, got a good piece, and it's that win. He wasn't far from the fence. Ferrando into third, though. So just as good as a bunt, just as good. Yeah, so Simmons does his thing, gets Ferrando to third, and that is with a deep fly ball against a heavy wind. I mean, he would have had enough to get it into that parking lot without a doubt on a less windy day. Nevertheless, does his job to Bulldogs are 90 feet away from the game's first run. Drew Bozek in the box. Corners are up. Holenfield's up. Scoring at a premium. Can't afford to just give up runs. No one better under pressure. Bozek very familiar with it. Breaking ball away and gets the strike call. Ferrando at third with very good speed. Only one out. Need to get it somewhere to the outfield. Breaking ball stays on. It's fouled away. Had his way back. Oh, and to the count. Want to put it in play. Up and into the box. Tanuda on deck. And that is a line drive into the gap. That's going to score him easily. That is a double all day long. And a big hit by Big Play Bozak. Tack on the first RBI run score of the game. Ferrando led off the inning and comes around. Bulldogs lead one to nothing. And they are in business with Tanuda stepping in the box. And at second stands Drew Bozak. And he is uh, no, not unfamiliar in any way with pressure. And uh, that's what you get out of him when, you, when, when there's pressure moments. And not just in this sport. That goes for football as well. In steps Tanuda. one nothing lead. First run of the game. And the corner, first baseman's up. First base is open as well. And, oops, that curveball was there. Swing and a miss. Didn't wait quite back long enough. I wouldn't have even given him that much of the play with the base open, but with Fiore on deck, and if you go by the numbers... And the pitch. And that gets a lot of the plate. He drills that one, and it is being tracked. And that is going to be another tag to third situation. He's going to throw through, though. And that is a nice throw. And dang, double play. Give credit where credit is due. However, Bozek does the damage with the bat. The feed don't matter. The Bulldogs grab the lead. We have five innings in the books. Bulldogs one, Barrington zero, and we will be back. Hey guys, Paul at Surf Cantina. I'm hanging out in our game room, which is available for rent. We are currently booking our graduation parties. Feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to get you started. Bring the kids, bring grandma and grandpa, heck, bring everyone and come to the Musquamacate Spring Fest in Westerly, May 10th, 11th, and 12th at Musquamacate State Beach. You'll find an array of great food trucks, arts and craft vendors, games, rides, and a Ferris wheel with panoramic views. Friday night is John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band kicking off a weekend of great music on the main stage. Everybody wants to be in the it's time for summer at Musquamacate Beach with Springfest, Musquamacate.org. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, and here we go, folks. Two innings to play, at least two innings to play, and the Bulldogs score the first run of the day and grab the first lead of the day in uh, 
what has turned into a pitcher's dual defensive battle. Uh, this Barrington Red, uh, Red Sox, this Barrington Bulldog rivalry in baseball, uh, it, it stretched on for years and years and years. I think actually they might have knocked me, uh, me out of the playoffs my last season. Uh, so that being said, is one run enough? Uh, Michael Poole seems to be getting stronger as he pitches, uh, which is often the case. First pitch is low, 1-0. and oh. Again, a uh, divisional battle that uh, may have repercussions later on in the season. Late in the season, they may see each other again. There's a good chance of both of those things. And that one, right over the plate, batter stepped out when he swung. Uh, that's just a little bit of an intimidation factor that pulled more than that, more than really any other imposes on his batters. And that one's up and in. And to do it really, too, he's a huge presence on the rubber, on the hill. I mean, they're intimidating forces, and any team coming in, younger players, knows the deal. Uh, they're one of the Bulldogs' one-two punches. And uh, Poo quickly kind of three and one, actually. Three and one, and we're back in play here. Leading off the top of the sixth, and that's got the plate called strike. Count is full. I think he wants a free bag, but I don't think Michael Poole's going to give him one. Sending it up right there down the pipe, and that's where he gives it to him. And Simmons pops out before he even ever made the call. Batter knew, didn't want to swing, and that is where later in games, this is where um, he really does impose himself uh, as a presence on the mound, and he does he doesn't get tired. He, he is also when I say he, the defense behind him has allowed him to keep his pitch count down. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's definitely not that high. I think he's walked one batter, if that, and that is up and in. One and zero. Oh. Coming off of a complete game. I mean, he's the full package. There's no question. I would not want to have to face him with uh, a lot on the line, let me tell you. He's very businesslike. He doesn't wear his emotions on his sleeve. Hey, and that's a beautiful breaking ball. Number four in the box, Gabe Tanu, the senior for the Eagles. This Eagles seem a very good team. I mean, you cannot knock their performance here tonight by any means here today. Uh, in any way whatsoever, they're good. They're going to be around later on in the playoffs. Uh, the Bulldogs want to be around later on in the playoffs. Uh, so clashing heads again is more than likely. And that one stays off the outer port, gets the call, and we'll take it. He's been doing it all day. I should have known by now. Full count here. And that breaking ball fouled away. Nice pitch. So the Bulldog get the weekend off, and then Johnson comes to town on Monday. We'll be here. Full count. Pool's offering, and it is grounded to second. Handled, throw out at first, four to three, ground out. And the Bulldogs are in business here, two down in the top of the uh, sixth inning. And Zach Miner has played a heck of a, done a heck of a job at second base for the Bulldogs here. But the three games we've seen the Bulldogs, he's done a heck of a job. Defensively overall, uh, the Bulldogs have played extremely well when we've had the early opportunity. And we're going to be along for the ride. If the Bulldogs are playing here and it goes the same as uh, Diamond over there, on the other side of the complex, and uh, I'll be behind home plate. Two extremely talented teams, and oof, I'm still not completely calmed down from the comeback the girls had the other day. And that is a turn down, and that is going to be a single. That was a fastball in the inner portion. Kind of just left it there, and number three for the Eagles turns on it. Gets themselves the tie-in run on base, just like that. Quinn Murphy was, the senior. And up to bat number 18, 
who is not on my lineup. 19. He is Luke Tanu, the, the senior. So the Bulldogs, two outs running around first. Got to be careful, and they know he would love to steal and get himself in scoring position. They've done that twice earlier. Man, that's inside on dive away, but it's inside. Ball one. And I think he just tipped it, the batter. And he's going. The batter certainly did. And one hop, tag down, safe. He did get under it. Good call. But the batter tipped that off. He's going to, as a senior, he shouldn't do that. And now the uh, tie, tying runner is in scoring position for the Eagles. One and one count. Kick, pitch. And he slaps it, and it's going to it's gonna be tough. He's going to round. He's got to hold it third. That's no choice. And Zach Miner having a day. What a job of not just getting to that ball, but rounding it. So he has some momentum going home. The coach had no option but to hold him up. I mean, he would have been uh, dead at home. And in comes the infield. Got to get things together here. As uh, immediately the Eagles turn on a two-out threat. And uh, number two steps in, Miles Fontaine, the junior. And I know he is. I recall him for either a hit or a walk. I know he got to be, got on base one way or another. So that uh, that was an exceptional play by Miner to uh, the, the speed of that ball wasn't in favor of the Bulldogs. The spin possibility wasn't in favor. The location wasn't in favor. And uh, he read it all, took the right route to it and forced the coach. I mean, that's the tie and run right there. If he doesn't do that and he's got his momentum going to the outfield or something, that coach would have seen it and it would be a tie. So uh, that's fundamentals. Let's see if they can capitalize and get out of it. And that's a breaking ball. Check swing, strike anyway. 0-1. Uh, these are the moments, boy. The 0-1 pitch by Poole. Breaking ball, and it's a ground ball to third. Slow roller, fielded cleanly. Throw on the run. Ferrando having a day. Throws it across the diamond to Nick Tria. Poole gets out of it. And this is a fired up Bulldog squad as they head to the bottom of the sixth inning with a one to nothing lead. We will return for the fireworks, folks. Get set to bat, looking to add to a slim one to nothing lead. Boy, oh boy, obviously runs are her at a premium here today, but let me tell you, it has been an exciting one. But, folks, what I really like about it, I, you don't have to see love when your pitcher, when like Mike Poole strikes out 18 people. But today has been thus far a beautiful combination of uh, great pitching by Michael Poole. It has great command, as always, but the defense has had to step up a couple times, a few times, and he has trusted them enough uh, that he hasn't had, he has a thought he's had to take on the whole load himself, and the defense has stepped it up. Whether it's been Zach Miner on multiple occasions or the second time now that uh, Josh Ferrando has come across the diamond to make a play that saved a run. So uh, that being said, the Bulldogs are doing it defensively and they're doing it on top of on the mound. And uh, when you can put that together, when you have a team like Barrington against you that has pitching and defense as well, 
Uh, what can you say? Uh, this is just a great game, and uh, it's not over yet. I mean, three outs seems like uh, not many, but look at the last inning. So the Bulldogs able to get through the top half of Barrington's order last inning as well. Nobody warming up. Clearly, Poole wanting to finish what he started. And in steps Tom Fiore, looking to get the Bulldogs started and hopefully an insurance run or so. But this has been a fun, fun game. It's just getting me more and more eager for more this spring. I mean, every sport, this is uh, getting crazy. Up and in on the box. Catcher wants a timeout. No, nope, we are about to be ready. And still getting that sign from the dugout. And then off of his wrist. That's a lot. That's a strange system. And he turns on an inside fastball, fouled it away, and won the count. I am on the edge of my seat. I'm sticking out of the booth in this game at this point. I mean, but having watched that game, that softball game, breaking ball comes back in for him. Nice pitch. Uh, the two strikes on Fiore now, where they send eight batters to the plate in the seventh, score seven runs, and win it as they were down six going into it. It is not over until the third out of the seventh. And that one stays away. A catcher for the Eagles, who has had a nice game. He really has. Uh, he has saved a uh, run. He has saved uh, a lot of men in motion on the bases on a, a few occasions. Three of which he just reached out behind the batter. We are up in the, on the box now. We got a one-two count. Bases are empty. We are in the bottom of the sixth. Fastball. And he gets up under it. Fly ball. Left field coming in on it. He's got a beat on it. And we'll make the out seven unassisted. One down in the bottom of the sixth inning. Here at Similori Field Sports Complex on this beautiful Friday afternoon to be in a booth and watch a game anyway. Or rewatch it later tonight. If you didn't catch it, I'll tell you what, I feel bad. You have missed a beautiful, you have missed a great game of baseball. Two good teams, like I said a hundred times, that may meet again uh, playing good baseball. And that is fouled off and out of play. Uh, play playing good baseball, good pitching, good defense. Um, there's been hitting, it's, there's been it all, so. The wind has had its effects on the game, I'm sure. They kept Simmons. Hey, it's been a miss. Boy, did he pull a string on that one. That is a good curveball. Oh, and to the count. It definitely kept Simmons in this, uh, in the ballpark, I think. And this is going to stay away. As a pitcher with it in your face all day, I can't be the easiest conditions, but across the board, they have done their thing on the on the mound here today. A mound that was a mud puddle just hours earlier today. So uh, credit to the rec department for bringing it back to pretty much the best high school field in the state. Tria. One, two, count, one down, nobody on. Bulldogs with a one-run lead. And that is an outside corner swing and a miss. Two down now. And in steps number 24, Zach Miner, who I'm telling you folks has made some vital plays at second base. Uh, he is... Uh, Going to try to get things going here with two outs on the top of the six. But he, he's a huge part of the reason this ball game uh, doesn't read differently on the scoreboard. Yeah, I'm telling you, a lot of it comes down to the way he runs that little spinner, the flare hit that almost scored a run. Oh, and two, the count. Two down, nobody on, bottom six. Pool getting ready, the players getting ready. I think they want three outs. And a one nothing win. Um, 
would keep them up top of these providence, who is in their pod. I know that. Barrington may have maybe as well, but that would be one heck of a pot. He's probably as Wesley and Barrington. Breaking ball, hit off the end of the back. is by the pitcher. Changes the direction of it a little bit, not enough, and that will do it for the sixth inning. Folks, we are hitting the top half of the seventh, and it uh, could be the last half of the game. Bulldogs with a one-run lead through six. We're going to take a break and bring you the finale. This month is Gavin's one-year anniversary here at KMA. I think the biggest change that I've seen in him is his self-confidence. really been a good thing to me. I got bullied all through like second grade. Watching Gavin grow into, you know, a, a self-sufficient, independent young man. And it's been a wonderful thing to see. It actually got me wanting to teach here. It's made me not get bullied this year. We're so lucky to have somebody like Sensei Mike and, and his team to, to be working with our kids. Holy smokes, and here we are. Top of the seventh inning. Bulldogs one, Barrington Eagles zero, and Michael Poole and the Bulldogs just three outs away from not only remaining undefeated and uh, grabbing their sixth win of the season, but it'll actually give them a game and a half, two-game advantage over Barrington. Again, a division rival and a high-caliber team. Clearly, two of the top teams in the state battling here today in Westerly, and uh, the scoreboard's proof positive of that. You got, you got Michael Poole on the hill doing his thing, and uh, he did his thing in Charo, where he nearly himself struck out 18 out of 21. Didn't ask a lot of his defense here today. He's had a blend of strikeouts and a blend of good defense behind him. He really has. And uh, that's what kind of team we're dealing with here in Westerly. Got a loud dugout in Barrington. Doesn't take a lot to score a single run. That being said, with a Michael Poole on the hill, it does. Breaking ball, that one's there called strike. Both teams have dealt with a ferocious wind. And that's off the plate. And this one, hey, a nice piece of hitting if it stays fair, and it does not. Stay fair. That is unfortunate if you're an eagle and fortunate if you're a bulldog. Two strikes now. Count two and two. Like I said, remember, folks, there is one more coming after this one. If you want to come down and see a ball game, bulldogs are playing a non-leaguer versus Waterford. And that is on the inner portion off his fist. Stays alive the batter. Went down off his foot, too. And a nice pitch by Poole. He is, uh, he is since as, and has been since he was a freshman, the most po composed, poised pitcher that, uh, uh, the, that I've seen. He really, really is. You would never know he's in any kind of a situation. And he steps out, time out was called as a pitcher, follow through and finish. And he did. But uh, he, we, we obviously learned that really, really fast his freshman year. But, I mean, he's – looks like he's still getting stronger here. And that one is out to right, and it's going to go foul. Two and two the count will remain here. And uh, the top of the seventh inning, the Bulldogs with a slim one to nothing lead. And Barrington has had their chances. The Bulldogs have made the plays they've needed to make. 
when they've needed to make them, and they've made some excellent plays as well. Swing real late and fouled off. Uh, but they've made excellent plays when they've needed to make excellent plays. They've done little things. Maybe not the uh, complete sprawl-out diving catches, but how you round the ball before you get it or, or cut off the shortstop uh, on the ground ball on the infield twice to save two runs. Uh, yeah, Ferrando had, had a heck of a game on the infield. And that one's going to stay low and away. Good at bat by the batter, making him work, number 11. Trevor Snow, he's a senior. I don't know, I'm going to bet he doesn't want to swing here, but Poole looking to force it. And that one's there, makes him swing. Parker backhands, got it, fires the first. Scoop, got him, bang, bang, nice D by the Bulldogs. They've done it all day. Started with Parker, ended with Tria, and it started with the, the, the confidence again, again that Poole has in the defense behind him. It's been, this has been an entire team thing here, and uh, to have a shutout on the line here, one down, now no one on. Lefty in the box. Swing and a miss. Throwing fire here in the seventh. And over the other portion again beats him. Oh, and two. Poole pitching as though he can throw another seven. And he gets him high and away. He is fired up. Pumps his fist. And the Bulldogs are one out away from a huge division victory. Michael Poole one out away from a complete game victory against division rival Barrington. Not over yet. Number 20 steps in. Ground ball, first pitch, and it is over in the books. The Bulldogs, Jaden Parker fires to Nick Tria to finish this thing off. Michael Poole, complete game, shutout victory, one to nothing, the final versus the Barrington Eagles. And folks, hold no punches. This is a good Barrington Eagles team. The Bulldogs very well may see him again, but a huge, huge early season victory. And I'll tell you, that one-two punch is huge. I don't know if it's matched in the state that the Bulldogs have on the hill, but they have to defense behind it as well and they demonstrated that here today one nothing Bulldogs win what a game they do have another one coming up versus Waterford non-league matchup uh, but that's it for this voice for the day we are 3-2-1 Wesley signing off till Monday where I'll be right here in the box experience local excellence with roof right roofing in Charlestown Rhode Island with over 40 years of unmatched expertise, RoofRight specializes in architectural shingles and holds the prestigious title of GAF Master Elite Installers. Known for their commitment to the community and support for local initiatives, RoofRight is your trusted partner for all of your home's roofing needs. Call today for a free estimate at 401-212-4140. Hi, this is Dan from Lathrop Insurance. In this challenging insurance environment, Lathrop Insurance can be your beacon in the storm to help you find the coverage you need at the right price. Now, more than ever, you need a partner in the insurance industry that can work with multiple carriers to make sure you have the right coverage at the right price. Lathrop Insurance carries home, auto, and business insurance and can be reached at 401-596-2525. We've been supporting the local community since 1939 and we look forward to working with you. Ever thought about leveling up your fitness game in a fun and meaningful way? Kiefer's Martial Arts on Granite Street has everything you're looking for. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and of course, adult karate. It's not just about getting fit, it's about building your self-confidence, discipline, and that unstoppable feeling you get from all your hard work. Stop in to Kiefer's Martial Arts today to sign up. Are you looking for a fresh cut in Westerly? 
Step into Rio's Barber Shop in Granite Plaza. Whether it's a classic trim or a trendy new look, we've got you covered. Experience the perfect cut for every age and style in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. At Rio's, it's not just a haircut, it's an experience. Visit Rio's Barber Shop in the Granite Plaza in Westerly or give us a call to schedule your appointment at 401-315-2208. Your style, our craft, Rio's Barber Shop. Hot summers and cold winters can be unbearable, but DNV Mechanical has the solution for you. As a Mitsubishi Diamond dealer, we provide energy efficient and personalized comfort solutions for your home. Our experienced technicians will install your new system quickly and efficiently, ensuring your complete satisfaction. Don't suffer through another season of discomfort. Contact DNV Mechanical today for a personalized ductless mini split installation that fits your lifestyle. DNV Mechanical, your comfort is our top priority. What's going on, Westerly? It's Patrick down here at the Wireless Zone at Dunn's Corners, Verizon Authorized Retailer. And right now is the best time to come on in and get a brand new phone. We are offering our hottest new 5G phones, the iPhone 15, the S24, Pixel 8 for free with a trade-in. And the best part is 5G is finally coming down here to Westerly and the surrounding areas. So make sure you're on the best network and get it for free when you're on the right plan. Come see us at 224 Post Road. The Thirsty Beaver Hometown Pub and Grub in Dunn's Corners is your ultimate destination for refreshing drinks, delectable dishes, and memorable moments with family and friends. Enjoy live music, DJ trivia every Wednesday night, and we're now the official spot to come watch and root for your favorite Westerly High School sports teams. The Thirsty Beaver, located at 265 Post Road, Spindrift Village, Westerly. Hey guys, Paul at Surf Cantina. I'm hanging out in our game room, which is available for rent. We are currently booking our graduation parties. Feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to get you started. Bring the kids, bring grandma and grandpa, heck, bring everyone and come to the Meskwamikit Spring Fest in Westerly, May 10th, 11th, and 12th at Meskwamikit State Beach. You'll find an array of great food trucks, arts and crafts vendors, games, rides, and a Ferris wheel with panoramic views. Friday night is John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band kicking off a weekend of great music on the main stage. It's time for summer at Meskwamikit Beach with Springfest, Meskwamikit.org. <laughs> 